Hi everyone, in this tutorial I'm going to show you how I painted this kitten in acrylics. Now the first thing is with all acrylic paintings I like to get the background done and for this you can see I just went with a quite a dark vignette effect with a very subtle light glow around the kitten. Once that was dry and I've got my outline on my surface I can then start working on the cat itself. Now I like to start off with the eyes first, I want to make sure that I get those accurate before I start working on the fur because of course the eye, that's the soul of that animal, the main expression. So I do wanna be making sure that I've got that completed before I look at any other element. Now when painting realistic eyes, I do have a few tutorials here on YouTube that show you through that process. I can add a couple of those in the description below if they're of interest. But the shading and the bright highlight on that eye in this situation was very important. So I did want to make sure that I captured that darker shadow at the top of the eye, that's showing where that top eyelid is gonna be. And then I've got that main lighter highlight nice and bright. Now you can see from the finished painting in the corner that that there, that good contrast between my dark shadows and my light highlights has already made that eye look three dimensional. Now when it came to working on the fur, this is where I had to work with a range of techniques. So I'm gonna be switching between a few brushes here to build up some softness and then go back in with my detailed brushes and a couple of my liner brushes to add those longer but finer hairs. Now depending on the technique that you want and the effect that you're after, the type of brush that you're gonna to wanna to use will vary. So here I'm mainly sticking to my rounds and my filberts. They are my favorites for painting fur for those first few base layers. Now in terms of base layers, you can see here that I haven't focused on any kind of detail yet. I'm just working on building up a good base foundation. Now because the ear is behind that hair that I'm currently painting for the top of the head, I had to make sure that I got the ear done first and then I could overlap all of this fur on top. Now I would always recommend to do that, so really break up that reference photo, whatever it is that you're painting, and anything that's behind fur that's sitting on top, you wanna be painting that first and ignoring all of that layer on top. Save those till the last layers, or once you've got that area completed, then you can move on. Now here's a prime example where I was using a mixture of a smaller round and a liner brush to get those lovely long white hairs across the top of that ear. Now that there is gonna to help to push that ear back, but I had to make sure that I got those pink colors in first and I got my contrast of that um, ear right, so I had my dark center and lighter edges. I had to make sure that that was accurate before I could start painting in those details. So for the fur on the side of the face, this again is where I'm gonna to start to now use many layers to help to build up the softness. Now I'm using, as I've mentioned, some softening and blending techniques, but the layering process here is just as important. It doesn't matter if we're using the correct brushes because really there's gonna be a range of brushes that we could use and we're gonna get the same outcome. But the amount of layers and how we layer is gonna build up more of that depth. So I don't wanna work with just my base layer and then jump into my lighter highlights. I wanna be building up that fur gradually, working with what's closest to the skin first and building up from there. Now there are many times here where I'm gonna be working with glazes. Now glazes is how I like to adjust the color of my painting. So even now this eye, it might not be the right color, the fur, it might need to be adjusted, but I can do all of that. As long as the painting has dried, I can do all of that with a simple glaze. Now I do have a video here on YouTube that talks you through exactly how I use my glazes and I've got three or four different paintings there where I'm showing you the different scenarios where glazes make a real difference. So if that's of interest then I will also link that in the description below. Now of course the real time version of this tutorial is up on Patreon now so there are no parts sped up or cut out. You get the reference photo, liner and material list so it's a perfect one to paint along to. So if you are interested in this or any of my in-depth tutorials on Patreon, then I will link that in the description below. Now this here was exactly the same process in terms of working with what's behind the fur first. So I had to make sure that I got that ear completed before I could work on the fur on the face. But this ear, as you can see, I'm starting to build up more of an outer focus effect. So I'm having to work more with my blending and softening techniques. Now you do have a couple of options when working with acrylics to achieve this. You can do your wet on wet blending and I did that throughout some of this painting and that is where you work with your wet layers of paint, you work with your next layer of paint and then you can blend the two together. 
Now acrylics, of course, they do dry quickly. That's one of the things that I love about the medium. You can progress up through your layers far quicker. But in order to do the wet and wet blending, we do need that paint to stay wet so we can have that chance to use our blending brushes to soften that paint out. Now this is where using a fine mist sprayer bottle works really well. If you have an airbrush, you can just use that to mist some water over the top. Now I would recommend using a fine mist sprayer bottle rather than a standard normal spray bottle because a normal bottle will apply more heavier, larger droplets of water and that can be really hard to then get a smooth blend in. If you put too much water on your surface with those larger droplets, you can actually remove that paint from the surface and it works more like an eraser rather than a blending tool. Now the other thing that you can do with a fine mist sprayer is if your painting is dry, you can spray a fine layer of the water over the top and then apply your paint. That therefore means that your paint is already touching a surface that is wet. So you're basically going to get the same effect as you would wet on wet blending. It doesn't matter if the layer of paint was wet or if it's water. It's just that it has that moisture on the surface so that then when you take your blending brushes, that paint has got something to then transfer into and get those softer edges. Now obviously if you do want to see all of those techniques in real time then this is the one of the tutorials that really does focus on that from start to finish. Now as I mentioned at the beginning of this video I did rely more on my wet and wet blending techniques and this is what I'm doing for this section of the fur. You can see that I was applying the lighter paint next to the darker paint and I'm using that to then get my soft edges. So because I'm working with quite a faster technique here, not allowing that paint to dry, I'm able to get that nice soft transition from dark to light. This is a really good base foundation for then starting to add your details. Now this at this stage is very tempting to jump straight to our lighter highlights. The base foundation here looks good. I've built up a nice amount of depth already, but all of these layers that I'm gonna be adding before I get to my lighter highlights are gonna help make a real difference to how three-dimensional this painting looks when completed. So I'm using here a range of brushes. Now depending on the fur texture, I will alter the size and technique and how I'm using that brush. Now the way that we load the paint onto the brush and the pressure applied to the brush is also going to give us a range of techniques. So you can, once confident enough with the brushes, you can make a round brush work very similar to a liner. If you apply that paint and you really do run that brush through the paint in a way to mould that shape of that brush, more of like a chisel edge, you're able to get really fine lines. So you don't need one brush of every single shape or size in order to complete a realistic painting. And to show this, I created this little sparrow painting here. I've got a time-lapse version with voiceover on YouTube and I've got the real-time version on my Patreon channel. And that bird was painted with one brush from start to finish. So by focusing on good brush technique, we can really learn how to make the best out of every single brush that we have. Now I've probably got 60, 70 brushes, but I probably only use eight to 10. And that's because each brush we can make have a range of effects, range of techniques, just by the way that we use that brush, even how down to where we hold that brush. And I really did find creating that project just using one brush was a really good challenge. It was a great, really fun painting to work on. So onto the body of this kitten, and this is where I really did have to focus on more of that wet and wet blending to get that smooth base layer. So you can really see here how I'm using a slightly larger brush to get that coverage down a little bit quicker so that then I wasn't fighting with as much of that quicker drying time. And then here I have to make sure that in order to get that wet and wet blending technique, I have enough paint loaded on my brush to start with. So it's very easy to sometimes only put a small amount on that surface. Maybe we're a little bit too um, worried about putting too much paint down initially. But in order to get this wet and wet blending technique, we do have to have enough paint on that surface for our blending brushes to work with. Now, because this fur is longer, softer and a little bit out of focus, I did have to work on a bit more of a larger scale and a larger area than I have the face. Obviously there I was just working maybe on one or two square inches, but for the body of this cat, I did split it up into two halves. Now, because the fur is longer, I had to make sure that I had that larger section painted in because one section of fur, it really does travel and then maybe overlaps into the next section of fur. So in order to get that softness and avoid any harsh start and stop points, I did have to make sure that I had one larger area painted in. 
Now, if I was working on small sections here and I had those harsh start and stop points, this fur is not gonna look smooth and nice and soft. So here, this is one of those exceptions where I will have to increase the size of that area that I'm working on. However, now that I'm working with my liner brushes, I'm now focusing on two or three square inches at a time. I don't have to work on the entire section of this chest that I've painted so far. The only reason being there is I'm now starting to add my details and I'm not really focusing on the blending techniques. I've done those with my first few layers. So it is at this stage here where most of the left side of the fur is starting to take shape that we'd may be tempted to also add in the whiskers. Now I like to add the whiskers in for my very last layer. They overlap and are on top of everything else. And I never want to add them in until I'm completely sure that everything below those whiskers is finished because otherwise we have to paint around them and that's just far more time consuming and more difficult and complex than it needs to be. So I really would hold off on that, don't add them at this stage, do make sure that the entire painting is done. Now the very first layer of that acrylics, you can see it looks terrible, it looks really blotchy, it's not smooth at all, but it's all about a layering process. If we were to fixate too much on that first layer and then jump into the details, that there is gonna show through, through those layers of detail. So this second layer here, which I call the layer of refinement, this is one of the most important layers that I add in my acrylic paintings. Here, I'm really focusing on the softness. Again, those blending techniques. I don't wanna focus on any kind of detail yet. This is the fur that's closest to the skin, and then I'm gonna be building up from there. Now you can really see how I'm focusing as well on these soft transitions. Again, I don't have any harsh start and stop points. I will add paint, some lighter paint, I'm gonna blend it out with my blending brushes and then so on, keep on repeating that until I've got my contrast right. Now here I need to focus on contrast and softness at the same time. I don't want my darks to be really dark there because that fur, the darkest part is actually around the kitten's eyes. So I did have to be making sure that I had a nice variety of my darks and lights. But for the lighter section here on the arm that I'm starting to work on now, that was really quite bright, almost overexposed. Now in some situations, I would actually add more detail there because painting something bright white, because it's overexposed in the reference photo, doesn't always look good in paintings. But here, I have added an extra couple of sort of mid-tone greys and lighter greys, but I have kept it pretty bright. I liked the effect that it looked in that reference photo. So that's something that I was just keen to keep in my painting as well. But if I did have something that was overexposed, particularly bright, and I felt that it was lacking detail, that's where I would go in and add some more of my mid-tones. It's just very important not to add too many really dark layers, because in this situation where I'm painting soft fur, that would actually make the fur look a little bit coarser. So I just want to be making sure that I'm only slightly darkening those mid-tones. And as I've mentioned, the very last thing to go on this painting are the very impressive whiskers of this kitten, lovely long whiskers. And in order to create these long, fine lines, it's all in the pressure and the correct consistency of that paint. I do have a video here on YouTube that's packed with tips on how to get the fine lines of whiskers using a liner brush. I'll link that video in the description below if it's of interest. So I really do hope that this video has been useful. If it was, I would really appreciate it if you could give it a like and a thumbs up because it makes a huge difference to my channel. I'd be really, really grateful. I also upload a couple of videos to YouTube every week. So if you'd like to get notified of that content, then hit the subscribe and the bell button. I'm gonna be uploading another video um, in the next few days, but as always, thank you so much for watching.